Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new week. We are very happy to introduce you to our show title, Speak of Africa. Thank you very much to all our subscribers. Thank you very much to all our viewers. We salute you. We thank you for what you're doing for this show. This week, we're going to continue telling the story of African problems. What are the problems this week? Well, most Africans are still worried about bribery, corruption, which is bringing us behind. They are, they are also blaming Christianity and Islam for creating most of the problems in Africa. What is responsible for the underdevelopment of Africa? A lot of you guys are saying Christianity is to blame, Islam is to blame. So you are saying that instead of pouring so much money, building mosques and building churches, we should be taking this money to build factories and businesses so that our people can prosper. That's what you're telling us. In fact, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, has been laughing at us, Africans. You guys waste so much money praying and praying, and nothing happens. Why waste time praying? Prayer alone will not, will not solve your problem. You need to come up with a plan. Do some business. At one point, I made a joke. I said, heaven helps those who help themselves. My sister laughed at me with her pastor. I said, oh, Prince, that is not in the Bible. I said, I know. It's not in the Holy Bible. But the way the Bible works, the Bible assumes that we should have a Protestant work ethic. We should know that Labor is ennobling, do our best, then the Lord will bless us. That's part of the Protestant work ethic, which is what capitalism is built upon. So we're telling our fellow Africans, there's a video you guys sent to us, so many of you sent the same video, and I'm going to share that video in a minute. The video is in French, but it just tells us that if we were taking some of the money that we're giving to the church, we're giving to the mosque every week, at least $100 a week, we could put this money in the development of Africa, and Africa would develop very well. Listen and watch this video for a minute. Arrêtez d'aller à l'église, développer l'Afrique. En Afrique subsaharienne, nous avons 515 millions de chrétiens. Supposons que chaque chrétien donne 100 francs à l'église chaque dimanche. Le mois, nous sommes à 516 millions, fois 100 fois 4 égale 206 milliards. Sur 5 ans, ça fera 206 millions fois 100 fois 60 égale 12,360 000 milliards francs CFA, soit 3,6 000 milliards de dollars, dépassant très largement le PIB de la France, 2,78 000 milliards de dollars, un an. Dès lors, nous pouvons en déduire que si 63 % des chrétiens de l'Afrique, 516 millions, CDAO, décide de ne plus aller à l'église sur cinq ans, la CDAO sera la sixième puissance économique mondiale au lieu de la France. S'ils en décident sur dix ans, elle sera la plus forte puissance économique mondiale devant les USA, 20,53 000 milliards de dollars. Si c'est sur 20 ans, alors la richesse de la CDAO seule devrait être l'ensemble de celle de la Chine, USA, Japon et France. Le débat n'a plus lieu d'être. Le christianisme est l'appauvrisseur, est le premier obstacle du développement de l'Afrique. Vous avez les preuves devant vous, refutez ou pas. Nous vivons les retombées. Thank you for watching this video. Then another story that is really big in Africa is the story of South Africa taking Israel to the ICG, International Criminal Court in Hague. It's a big story. We're going to get to it. So those are some of the stories will draw into your attention. But what about Ambazonia? I know you guys are telling us the Ambazonia revolution is over. We've been telling you it's not over. It's not over yet. The propaganda from the Republic of Cameroon is telling you the revolution is over. It's not yet over. There's activity on the ground because you guys send me the videos every week. What is happening? Well, in Ambazonia, 2024, rings in as a new year, and there is action on the ground, a lot of action. Last week, we told you that uh, 
the forces of uh, La Republic du Cameroon, the Banana Republic, went into Ambazonia and attacked the Ambazonia defense forces in their hideout in the northwest region. In retaliation, this week, we are seeing that the Ambazonia guys are back in action. Big, big, big. Dr. Lucas Ayabacho, the leader, the guy who really created the self-defense posture in Ambazonia, came out and attacked the forms. He's realized that the people who are really creating problems in Ambazonia are the enablers. They are the ones who are prolonging the road to Boya. They are the ones who are prolonging self-determination for Ambazonia. And he's telling these forms to watch out. Ayabacho made a lot of deep pronouncements, but it looks like some of the funds sat back and decided to fight back, Dr. Ayabacho. So we have a video of a guy. We don't even know where this guy is a phone, but he claims to be a phone. We've tried to talk to a lot of people in the Northwest region to identify this uh, a guy who claims to be speaking for phones, but we don't even know his name. So watch it and give us more information. Watch the video where he's complaining about Ayabacho. Watch it for a minute. We, the force of Northwest, were going to take action against Ayabacho and the other Northwest elite that have been disturbing our region and our country. Enough is enough, Mr. Ayabacho. Of recent, force of Northwest had meeting to deliberate on putting the waifu in place so we can talk as one man and you started insulting phones that you are going to kill them and their families? Young man, that's uncalled for. And it is sacrilege. You have gone far and far. It's enough. Enough is enough. The phones are going to sit up and do something. To this effect, I think we are going to sit up and we are going to storm the embassies where these Ambazonian, so called Ambazonian leaders are found. We are going to storm their embassies, even for one week, one month calling on the government to repatriate you people back here so that at least something should be done to you people for this, for peace to return to our country. We have suffered and not our people have suffered. Enough of this nonsense. Enough of this nonsense. You cannot be smashing phones and killing and taking them in the bushes, beating them left and right. No, 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 no. We cannot, take, we cannot continue taking this, Mr. Yabachu. You have to stop this nonsense with the so-called Ambazonian government. Yes. It's an imaginary government that cannot exist and that will never exist. Thank you for watching this video. Then, of course, what did the Ambazonia guys do to show that they are angry? Well, this week, they down a military helicopter of the Banana Republic of Cameroon. You will see the evidence. When this happens, La Republic doesn't make noise about it. Usually, they will get my country people, who is their propagandist, to show pictures of Kumkumais Ambazonians restoration forces. But this time, when the helicopter is down, my country people doesn't do anything. It doesn't show it on social media. It doesn't show it on YouTube. It doesn't show it on Facebook. It doesn't show it on Twitter. But we have the pictures, because you guys on the ground are sending us the pictures. We have the pictures of the down helicopter. The guys use an RPG, a rocket propelled grenade, to down this helicopter. We understand over 13 military officers from La Republic du Cameroon lost their lives. So this is in retaliation for the guys who were killed. You hear General Efang, big number of a ADF, was killed when the B people attacked the ADF hideout. In retaliation, in less than a week, the guys came back strong and downed this helicopter. So it's a major blow. This helicopter costs more than 200 million. So the occupation is becoming very costly for La Republic du Cameroon, thanks to the brave forces of the Ambazonia Restoration Forces. Then the guys are back in action. Even the Bamile case, who are enablers, are being targeted. We have another video that you guys sent to us. This video shows the burning of vehicles belonging to these Bamile guys. The Bamliki guys are collaborating with 
the uh, SDOs and the DOs in this part of the world. So the Ambazonian Restoration Forces have decided to take out all these traitors. So traitorous forms are targets of Ambazonian Restoration Forces. So that's what the guys are doing. They are claiming that, well, if you are an enemy and you are obstructing our journey to Boya, we have to take you out. Yes. The one about the Cape Road and this way, the, where the devil end up. They don't tell me the road, not the pass. They the only insist we walk our pass. Because in the Cape Road, they're straight at the wrong hole, meeting Yan, zero death end up. Yes. A major general, the only brought this so. He don't catch him for road, took fire for day. He don't forgive warning for more than two days. They only say, though, that's what they had come because they've been a French people. They go home meeting for day. Say so they don't neutralize all soldiers they from Gogutunja. Say now the Republic to control Gogutunja. They forget for no saying Gogutunja then are under the ARF on Gogutunja under Major General the Ole Bro. Yes, do one a warning. Any man we want for contest and to me come, we will be ready for born. So right now they don't have any mercy for traitors and enablers. And Dr. Ayabacho is making it clear that he's going to target all these people. So he's keeping to his word. He's doing exactly what he preaches. Yeah. He's attacking them. And you can see the action in Ambazonia this week. So when somebody tells you from La Republique that Ambazonia is finished the way Biya did in his uh, end of year speech, it's a lie. Because we're bringing the truth to you. And you guys are sharing the pictures and videos with us. And we're sharing them with all our viewers. So thank you, Ambazonia. 2024 is a new year, and we understand that you guys are going to take things fighting hard for the people of Ambazonia. Sisiku Ayoktabe, your leader, you guys are remembering him. You sent us a lot of messages. You want to thank all the generals, General Ivo, all the guys who have fallen. You want to thank them for their bravery, and you are praying that uh, the liberation the, the real independence will come fast. It will not last. Okay? From La Republic to Cameroon, we have a lot of news too. The clan of Bia is falling apart. The house of Bia is falling apart. That's what we are noticing right now. Okay? There's so much infighting among the people in Bia's clan. You have the people from Nangai Boko who are behind Chantal Bia and Ferdinand Gongo. Then you have the Bulu clan who are behind uh, Frank. Then, of course, you have other folks who are fighting for power. So the people are just fighting. So the way we see it, power is leaving a dying king, King Bia. So the people now are very brazen. They are emboldened. They want to do something so that they can take over power. Okay? That's what is happening. So it looks like there's going to be a whole lot of bloodletting among the Betis before the dust will settle. Before the French come in, the Betis will kill themselves in big numbers. This is my prediction. It's going to happen. It's very sad. But it's going to happen. Next, we take you now to Congo DRC. Tired of waiting in long lines at the emergency room or your doctor's office? You should be. Why wait in long lines for care? It's time for you to come to Lucille Urgent Care. Real care, no waiting. Lucille Urgent Care, the best place for true and loving care. Service at Lucille Urgent Care is convenient, fast, time efficient, affordable, accessible, transparent, and cost effective. Real treatment is your right. Indeed, it's not just a privilege or pejorative. Skip the emergency room's long lines, kiss the ER goodbye, say farewell to your old doctor's office, pay less, save time, enjoy the excitement of convenience, receive immediate treatment, Get the health care you need quickly and affordably. Lucille Urgent Care offers many express services, rapid COVID-19 testing, on-site prescription, preventative lab services, imaging and x-rays, urgent medical treatment for common illnesses and injuries, routine vaccines and flu shots, work-related injury services, pre-employment, occupational annual and sports physicals, immigration exams, and much more. Same day treatment, rapid lab results, extended hours, weekend hours, no appointment necessary, no insurance necessary, no doctor necessary, walk-ins accepted, telemedicine available. We are open seven days a week with evening and weekend hours. 
We are located in Maryland, Lucille Urgent Care, 903 Half York Road, Towson, Maryland, 21204. Website, lucilleuc.com. Call at 443-275-1286 or 301-593-4897. Congo DRC is having a whole lot of problems. We are announcing the floods that have just uh, taken over Kinshasa neighborhoods. The rivers have flooded. Then water is everywhere. Water, water everywhere. Not a single drop to drink. Because it's not good water. The people's uh, property is damaged. And it's very, very sad. And we feel bad for our Congolese brothers and sisters. And we think this is a bad thing. It was only last week that they elected a new president. We know the election was fake, but uh, Felix Shisekedi is taking credit for organizing this election. Seni has already proclaimed the results. Seni is the electoral commission in Congo DRC. They've already proclaimed that Felix Shisekedi won the election, but the opposition is crying foul. They are not accepting these results. Felix Chisikedi is strong arming them to keep quiet. And he's saying business as usual. But what about the boastfulness? He said he's going to attack uh, Rwanda. Well, let's see how he's going to attack Rwanda. I've noticed that some of you guys are admirers of Felix Chisikedi. He's a Christian, just like I'm a Christian. But I don't just support people blindly because they are Christians. I support them because they are doing something good for their, uh, their country. They're doing something good for Africa. That's why I support them. Some of you are not happy because sometimes we criticize Felix Gisekedi, but we're criticizing him because he's allowing M23 to have a free reign in his country. Now, during the campaign, he said, oh, I'm going to attack Rwanda. The people were clapping, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to attack Rwanda. Let's see. If, it's, if he has a muscle to attack Rwanda. Some of you guys are challenging us by saying that, oh, Felicia Sikedi has the weapons now. He's going to do something about it. Sure. We encourage him to attack Rwanda and liberate his country. That's what a president should do. Words are cheap. Okay? Words are cheap, but we like to criticize. We like to be honest. Okay? The UN peacekeeping force is also leaving Congo DRC. So how is the security situation going to change? We think it may get worse before it gets better. That's our prediction. It's a mistake to pull these forces out because the Congolese themselves are very weak. It's a big country, but Mobutu had weakened the army so that the army now is the image of zombies, sleeping people. They don't have any power. They cannot fight which is why a small country such as Rwanda can take them on and give them hell for many years, as small as Rwanda is. Rwanda is giving them hell. Some of you guys will complain, oh, no, Prince Ojong, it's because there was an armed embargo, Congo DRC could not buy weapons. Now they can buy weapons. They're going to attack Rwanda. Sure, let them buy the weapons and attack Rwanda, and let's see. The Congolese people will be happy for a change. Then all around Kivu, going to the east, they will be able to live in peace and tranquility. So let's hope for peace profound in Congo DRC. Thank you very much, and let's go to Ivory Coast. In Ivory Coast, the major story is AFCON, the African Football Cup of Nations, is taking place in Ivory Coast this year. There are so many teams, so many groups where these teams belong. It's a good tournament that is taking place. And I know most of us love soccer. We're going to be watching. Some of us are watching already. We understand Ivory Coast scored some initial victories. And the citizens are very, very happy. But within this backdrop, you have problems in Ivory Coast. You have issues with presidential succession. Alassane Ouattara does not want to leave power. He plays games, comes back, he tries to sideline the opposition. So he's using the AFCON games 
as a form of diversion. He wants people not to pay attention to the problems of Ivory Coast. But the problems are there. And we've been telling you about the problems. Okay? Next, we leave Ivory Coast and go to Kenya. Kenya is a country where the democratic tradition is struggling to take hold. We understand that the elections have always been fierce. They've been fi fighting and people have been dying. But, Ken uh, but Kenya is still making efforts to be a democratic country. Okay? William Ruto was an underdog. He was not even favored by Uhuru Kenyatta, the president at the time. But, but William Ruto was able to use his street smart and credentials to win the election as president. Raila Odinga lost. But now there's some furor going on in Kenya. There is a conflict between the executive branch of government and the legislature. The law, yes, are complaining that the president is making a lot of pronouncement, is breaking the rule of law by overstepping his authority. William Ruto has been commenting on the way the lawyers are trying to circumscribe his agenda. They want to kill his agenda, and he doesn't like it. He's talking about it. But the lawyers are interpreting this as interference, political interference in the judicial system. But we hope the Kenyans are going to sort things out for themselves. In Nigeria, we have a lot of big stories. Obviously, the good story in Nigeria is the fact that the Aliko Dangote oil refinery has gone live. Production is taking place now. So it is a little move that oil can be refined in Nigeria. Nigeria depends so much on oil. We've been encouraging most of the leaders in Nigeria to diversify the economy of their country. But they've not done that. Agriculture could be very, very useful in Nigeria so that they can feed their people well. But for some reason, the Nigerian government just loves relying on oil. Now, Aliko Dangote is giving you guys a place to refine your oil. Instead of taking this crude abroad to refine, bring it back to Nigeria and sell it to Nigeria for pennies, no, now Nigeria can refine the oil on the spot at home. So this is a salutary move, and we thank the ingenuity of Aliko Dangote. Last week, we told you the FCC was behind Aliko Dangote, and that investigation continues. But there's even more investigation by the FCC. We have Beta Edu, who is the humanitarian uh, affairs minister. We understand that she embezzled a lot of public funds, big amounts. And Bola Tinubu decided to sack her from his government. We think this is a salutary move. Why did she steal so much money, money that was intended for poverty relief? She stole this money, and we think, unlike did something nice to fire this minister, we hear Better, Edu even went to Asorok to meet the president to ask for sympathy. But Bola Tinubu refused to grant her audience. Her entourage was chased out of Asorok like a bunch of bandits. So we think Bola Tinubu has set a positive tone by condoning justice, by making sure that people don't steal money. I don't even understand the way most African governments function. Why do you allow ministers to have direct access to money? What kind of economy are you running? These people should not have access to money. But it looks like they always bypass all the checks and balances. Now the lady puts all those millions, over $600,000 in her personal bank account. Is that not sad? Whereas the president wants this money to go and help poor people. This is supposed to be poverty relief. 
the minister who is in charge, it means that she does not even believe in the policy of the president, which is the policy of poverty eradication. She doesn't want the poor to live in peace. We understand Bola Tinubu loves poor people. He likes to give money away to the poor. Now, the money that he has set aside from his government to go to the poor, Beta Madu is stealing this money. So this is not a good thing. So it's not a good thing, and we draw your attention to it. Next, we take you finally to South Africa. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. The story in South Africa has to do with justice. You've heard a lot about the inter International Criminal uh, Court in Hague. Okay? So far, this court tends to judge the African presidents. What about presidents from other countries? For example, Israel. Well, last week we told you that uh, the government of South Africa decided to file a case against Israel, the genocide in Israel. You should know that in 1948, the United Nations created the protocols of the genocide. And Israel is violating these protocols. These protocols were established as a result of the Holocaust, when a lot of Jews were exterminated by Adolf Hitler. But today, Israel is ignoring these protocols, these uh, genocide protocols. South Africa defended its position in, in court very well. Israel was really ashamed. But it's funny, when you see some of the European countries that are saying that the South African case is without merit. America is not the only country. This week, we've, we found out that Germany is also supporting Israel. Isn't this sad? It is really sad when you look at the suffering of the Palestinian people. Yet, South Africa continues to support the poor people of Palestine. Why? Because Yasser Arafat, the former Palestinian leader, contributed a lot to the South African struggle. So it's more like, you help me, I help you. That's the law of reciprocity. Even when people were interviewing Mandela, why do you spend time with these guys? He said, no. When you guys in the West refused to help us, the Palestinians were there for us. They are our friends. So we cannot abandon them now because we want to please you. Mandela stood by his position. And today, the ANC is standing by that same position as articulated by Nelson Mandela. So you see, we've come to the end of our show. We've really articulated a lot of the problems that we find in Africa. And we're asking you to focus on these problems. Continue sending us material. Continue subscribing. Continue watching the show. Because when you send us material, we have a better show. If you look at like this week, a lot of the videos, pictures we have, you send them to us. And you let us know what is happening. So we gather the information from you, then we prepare the show. So please spend time commenting. When you spend time commenting, we get a lot more people viewing the show because they see that this is active. Thank you very much, and may God bless you.
Now more than ever, it is critical that medical facilities utilize modern, reliable electronic health records. Introducing Alexia HTC, the innovative, affordable online solution for physicians and patients. Doctors' visits, diagnoses, prescriptions, and billing have never been easier. With Alexia HTC, you can work more efficiently with the integrated flexibility medical professionals need today. Schedule a live demonstration. Call or visit us at alexiahtc.com. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.